It is a glorious weather night in Miami, and we welcome you to sold out Dolphin Stadium, where after a lengthy and exciting undercard, it's time for college football's main event. It's a FedEx BCS National Championship game as number one Oklahoma collides with number two Florida. With so much history and tradition from these two programs, the University of Florida and Oklahoma University, it's hard to believe tonight is the first time they have ever gathered on the same playing field. Oklahoma in search of its eighth national championship. The Florida Gators in search of their third. Their first came under Steve Spurrier. Urban Meyer trying to win his second. Number nine, Joaquin Iglesias, along with 17, Moses Madu. And set to put a foot on it, Caleb Sturgis of Florida. And the FedEx BCS National Championship game is underway. And this is Joaquin Iglesias. And he is stopped at the 23-yard line. To introduce you Oklahoma offensively Sam Bradford the Heisman Trophy winner has been the epitome of consistency since taking over as a redshirt freshman last year in 27 career starts has thrown for 84 touchdown passes so many weapons an outstanding offensive line led by the left side a pair of all Americans and they play hurry up move. This is Chris Brown, and he's met by Brandon Spikes, a first-team All-American middle linebacker of the Gators. Up front for Florida. A very active bunch, led by Jermaine Cunningham. Linebacking core, we mentioned Hicks. Along with Stamper, Spikes in the middle, the first-team All-American. A lot of talking, especially from number five, Joe Hayden, about this Oklahoma offense. Bradford throws. And Manuel Johnson makes the reception for a first down to the 37 yard line. We've seen the best of both already, Tom. First down, Florida wins the battle, makes it second and long. Oklahoma comes right back and picks up a first down. Brown off the left side. And penalty flags down on the play. There's no play. Prior to the ball being snapped, we are having a review for the previous play. So that is why the flags came down to stop play. It should be mentioned, Chris Brown wound up being the leading rusher for the Sooners. He was one of two backs to rush for better than 1,000 yards. They are without the electrifying sophomore tonight out of Las Vegas, DeMarco Murray, who ruptured a hamstring tendon, returning the opening kickoff of the Big 12 championship game. Charlie Strong. The Gators defensive coordinator told us that is a big hit for the Oklahoma offense not having Murray in the lineup tonight. And they love Moses Madu, who is the third string guy. But still, DeMarco Murray, a home run hitter. And here's what the review is. Did Manny Johnson, number one, catch the football with this tight coverage? Was he able to possess it all the way to the ground without the ball hitting the ground after the catch? There's a little bit of a hold by Hayden, comes in front. And Johnson coming down with the ball, body shielding it from that angle. A little bit better look here from the front side. Ball in his hands to the ground. It looks like he has his hands underneath the ball. I think this will be a first down for Oklahoma. This is an ACC officiating crew led by the first ever African-American referee. For a VCS National Championship game, congratulations to Ron Cherry. After review, the play stands as called. First touch, first touch. 
But we've already seen, Tom, on the first throw of the game, the coverage from Joe Hayden on Manny Johnson. Expect Florida to challenge everything against Oklahoma. I don't expect him to lay back very often against his high-powered attack. They'll come after them early in the down count. Bradford, not a body within 10 yards, lofting down the sideline for Johnson, and he is leveled by Major Wright. Manny Johnson beating Hayden, but look at Major Wright going right through the wide receiver and getting the first big breakup of the game. Well played, the safety coming off the hash and helping his corner in two deep coverage. Second down and 10, and they run the reverse, handing it off to Ryan Boyles and read beautifully by the Florida defense. Oklahoma going to this hurry up offense prior to the fall practice. They run roughly 80 plays on offense per game. You saw the NCAA Division I A average right around 60. They, they, they peeled off 97 at Kansas this year. Of Sam Bradford getting the call from the sideline. Is it a check or are they going with what's called? Florida trying to do a little cat and mouse and change their look on the defensive side. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Bradford threads the needle, caught by Iglesias, and that is a Sooner first down to the 37. Despite the early pressure by Florida trying to get to Sam Bradford, his offensive front is giving him plenty of time to deliver, and there's no, ac no more accurate quarterback than Bradford throwing the ball. Bradford looking down the sideline for Iglesias and overthrowing. Well, at least on this opening possession, much has been made as to whether Florida can apply heavy pressure to Bradford. None so far. So far, none. But it's a four-quarter game, as we well know. Don't expect Florida to back off because they haven't had early success. They will continue to try and disrupt Sam Bradford with pressure. Again, the look to the sideline. Do we play the play called? Or is there a change? That comes from the top, from Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator. Second down, they play fake it to Brown, and Bradford in trouble, and down he goes. You just said it. You play four quarters. You're not going to back off because you didn't get anything early. As we look at Oklahoma, the play clock about how long it takes them to snap the football. Ball set. They're going to snap it probably around 25 to 30, which is a little bit longer than normal for them. But the last sack caused by defensive coverage in the secondary. Be a third and 24. They need to get to the 28. Bradford being chased. Completes a pass, but far short of the first down to Madhu. And Oklahoma stopped on its opening drive of the night. And Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator for Florida, changed up on third down. This time they rushed three. And Justin, Justin Trato comes through and puts pressure on Bradford. Rushed three, dropped eight, took away all the passing lanes, and still got pressure on Sam Bradford. A great defensive series to start for Florida. Eight blocked, kicked the season for the Gators. Null puts a foot on it, and it rolls into the end zone. So now it's time for the Gators on offense. So now one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the history of college football, Tim Tebow, at quarterback. 
On first down, it's dropped. His first pass attempt to the true freshman, Jeffrey Demps. Tebow, of course, a Heisman Trophy winner a season ago in 40 career games, 65 touchdown passes. Wow. Weapons all over the field, including the big tight end, Aaron Hernandez. And up front, the Ponzi twins at center and right guard. Jim Tart will start, but play very little at left guard due to an injured shoulder. We'll see Carl Johnson there most of the night. Percy Harvin, they fake it to him. Tebow on the keeper and read well by the Sooners defensively. Mike Balligan getting his second career start here tonight at linebacker. This has been a maligned Sooners defense, ranking 65th in total defense on the year. What a fabulous freshman season for Travis Lewis. Broke all of Brian Bosworth's tackle records as a freshman. Dominique Franks said leading up to the game, Tim Tebow would be the fourth best quarterback in the Big 12. Oh, those are fighting words. So he better be ready to go tonight. Tebow on third and eight to Harvin, and that will be good enough for a first down and more. Harvin injured the rod ankle against Florida State. Did not play in the SEC championship game, and for more on him, here's Chris Myers. Well, Tom, Percy Harvin said he had no problem running straight all day, but when he cuts to one side, there's pain. They gave him some painkillers before the game. He told offensive coordinator Dan Mullen, I can handle 15 to 20 touches. Keeping him loose and warm throughout the game is the concern, but they will monitor his high ankle sprain throughout. So far, he looks good. Tebow looking for the goods down the sideline, and it's incomplete. He had an eye on Lewis Murphy. Harvin is so versatile and is unquestionably the most electrifying player on the field. Caught 35 passes for almost 600 yards. He rushed for almost 550 yards to the tune of nine yards per carry. And because of the ankle sprain, it behooves Florida to get him involved early just in case the ankle doesn't hold up. Previous play is under review. Bob Stoops, much like we are up here in the booth, not sure what it is they're going to review. The play was not under review. The game clock was under review. After the incompleted pass from Tebow to Lewis Murphy, the game clock continued to run. So they reset it. 10.45 to play in the opening quarter. Tebow to Brandon James, who has checked in offensively. And he's close to midfield and about a yard shy of a first down. Now James will spell Percy Harvin from time to time on offense here tonight. Great job on the perimeter. You don't get this play unless you get a block by your wide receiver. Watch number six, Deontay Thompson, right there. Shields off, allows Brandon James, and enters Riley Cooper, number 11. Gave him an alley to get into and get upfield. Well, they're going to bring out the sticks for a measurement. Brandon James, of course, is the best return man in all of college football, has played very little offensively, only 14 rushes and just now 11 receptions on the entire year. But his role expanded during the SEC championship game when Percy Harvin did not play. About a foot short of a first down. Well, Mr. Brenneman, when you're a foot short and you're the University of Florida, you don't have a fullback per se in your roster because he wears number 15 and plays quarterback. They'll probably go heavy formation and everyone right now is thinking here comes Superman hurtling at him. Number 15, Tim Tebow. The Gators had four players with 500 or more rushing yards this season. The only school in the country with that many. 
to eclipse the 500 mark and one of those Superman best short yardage guy in the country but in a bowl game with 32 days off do you start throwing in the wrinkles that you've worked on during that time. James the fake to him and Tebow gets the first down to the Oklahoma 48 yard line. I mean you got to keep your eyes open whether it's raining Jeffrey Dempse we mentioned Tebow Percy Harvin in the run game and the pass game and the USC transfer Emmanuel Moody and they told us he had a terrific preparation leading up to this ball game Emmanuel Moody Harvin will take the handoff and Jeremy Beal drops him a yard behind the line of scrimmage Beal the sophomore out of Carrollton Texas the first team all Big 12 performer let OU and Saxon tackles for loss take a look from the left side right there Jeremy Beal standing up he's a defensive end who's a converted linebacker and loves to stand up as much as he puts his hand in the ground great lateral movement unblocked gets right to the ball carrier a loss of two second and 12 for Tebow and the Gators intercepted by Nick Harris the first turnover of the night Thirty two takeaways by this Oklahoma defense on the year their first in the championship game. So a stop for each team defensively. Florida on downs Oklahoma on the turnover. This is Chris Brown and he crosses the 50 into Florida territory to the 49. Well these two teams as far as turnover margin is concerned the top two in the country plus 24 includes the interception a moment ago and Oklahoma during the year turned those into 20 touchdowns. Bradford finds Johnson very close to the first down mark needed to get to the 45 and depending on the spot of the football he may have it. It's interesting to know that Oklahoma scored on its first possession in 11 games this year. The two times OU failed to score on its first drive. The Sooners scored on their second drive. Once again Oklahoma coming up getting set then looking to the sideline. Third in the yard Brown has a first down to the Gator 43. Black comes in just behind where the tackle was made and we'll hear from our referee Ron Cherry. Red ball, personal foul, 72, offense. We have a first down on the play. Out the play, we'll have first and 10. Big Duke Robinson right here, number 72. Plays pretty much dead, continues to drive his man over the pile. The referees are like, hey, plays dead, big guy. Big Duke likes to maul. That's a In lot that of case, beef. He cost his team. It's a lot of beef <laughs> on the left side of that Oklahoma line. Robinson and Lodeholt. A combined 672 pounds. Grade A prime. But a prime mistake. Yes, it was. Brown on first and 20 picks up three. Madhu will come in for Oklahoma replacing Brown. And Broyles will check in at wide receiver. The good thing for Oklahoma was that it was a dead ball foul and they still had first down because they made it on the previous carry. It hurt them in field position but not in down and distance. It's like they're going to come after him here and against an empty set. 
They bring Will Hill from the safety spot. The catch is made by the big tight end, Jermaine Gresham. And that is good enough for an Oklahoma first down. Gresham, a second team All American, a three year starter. In the last three Sooner games, he had 22 catches for 335 yards. Tom, he averages 28 yards for every touchdown catch. A misread there. Again, a, an eye on Gresham. Carlos Dunlap, number eight of the Gators, applying the pressure to Sam Bradford. If Oklahoma can continue to isolate Gresham against, against linebackers of Florida, that's a great matchup for Oklahoma. An extra blocker, the fullback, Matt Clapp. Stays in. Catch by Johnson to the 41-yard line. A third down and five upcoming for the Sooners. The first drive, you notice Oklahoma's pass patterns a little took a little bit longer to develop. You notice that it going to more of a quick passing game. Balls out of Sam Bradford's hands quicker. Helps beat the pressure that Florida is throwing at him. Down the sideline for Gresham. He's got it inside the 15. What a throw by Sam Bradford. And that's what you talked about a moment ago. Wait a minute now. There is a flag thrown back in midfield. This might come back. Left side of the screen, Brandon Hicks, number 40, man to man against Jermaine Gresham. Oklahoma will take that matchup every time. Holy number 72. Offense. Been a rough start for the first team All-American left guard Duke Robinson. Oklahoma is the most penalized team in the country. Left side of your screen, he has two full hands on number 90, Lawrence Marsh. The second penalty flag against the All-American left guard. Well, rather than first down at the 10-yard line. It's third and 15 for Bradford and Oklahoma. But if you notice how Oklahoma, while their tempo is fast, is not as fast as normal. Four-man rush, and it's blown dead before it ever got started. Because they're looking to the sidelines so much, the tempo is slowing down for Oklahoma, and it's helping Florida's defense settle in. Boy, Bob Stoops went sprinting down that sideline. He wants to make sure his quarterback is protected at all times. Well, we never heard a call from Ron Cherry. Well, we understand they had to reset the play clock again. <laughs> Coach Stoop still wants a better explanation, doesn't he? <laughs> well, so you offense will do that to you. The clock operator's worst nightmare. Catch by Broyles. Great open field tackle by the true freshman Janoris Jenkins. And that's one thing Urban Meyer and Charlie Strong talked a lot about. Making the tackle when they catch the ball. They cannot permit extra yardage after the catch. This is a terrific job. This is a true freshman, folks. Number 29, Janoris Jenkins. His first career start against LSU. One on one against the Smurf wide receiver for Oklahoma, Ryan Broyles. Jenkins wins that battle. Always got to be aware of the block punt. Although they drop back into return mode, Brandon James will signal for a fair catch and fields it cleanly at the 13. So in a game with lots of numbers in favor of the offense, quiet so far. Tim Tebow and the Gators get the football for the second time, and this is the former USC Trojan, Emmanuel Moody. And he is leveled at the line of scrimmage by Gerald McCoy and Mike Balligan. Nice job by Oklahoma on that first snap, dropping Lindy Holmes, number 11, into the box and creating an extra guy, a bonus guy, against the Florida run game as we look at total yards early in favor of Oklahoma. Well, you made a point during the commercial 
about Oklahoma on offense. A couple of big penalties obviously have hurt them so far in this game. It has hurt them, but the good thing is that they're winning the field position battle with Florida. Values big time. Marvin on the direct snap. And coming up to make the tackle again is Lendy Holmes. It'll be third down for the Gators. I still believe that Florida must use Harvin as much as they can early in this game. The ankle is a question mark. I know Urban Meyer told Chris Myers, hey, he's good to go, he's ready. But you never, you, you always wonder, with these thoroughbreds, these secretariats, get him out there, get your big plays with him early because it's a long halftime and it could tighten up on him. Third down and five. Tebow steps up, delivers a strike to the tight end, Hernandez, and that's a first down. Hernandez, the third leading receiver for the Gators this year, 29 receptions. Of course, he got the chance when their All-American Cornelius Ingram went down with a knee injury before the season began. And he still had to adjust to that. He did not play in the opener against Hawaii because the coaches said his preparation wasn't up to snuff. They benched him for that game. He got the message and delivered a very fine season from the tight end position. Tebow on the quick hit to Harvin, looking for room. And that is a first down. Harvin still on his feet out to the 41-yard line. A gain of 14. Aaron Hernandez made the big catch the play before and came right back and created a nice block for Percy Harvin. One thing Urban Meyer and Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator, like to do, put their best players in positions to run plays that suit them the best, people plays. Don't worry about the formation at all. Put that guy in the right spot, give it to him, especially in space. They hand it off to Jeffrey Dempse. He maybe got back to the live scrimmage. Jeffrey Demps dubbed the fastest teenager in America by the nation's track community. Nearly qualified for the United States Olympic team in the 100 meter dash. Clocked at 10.01. Wow. That tied a world junior record. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> and remember, he's a football player running track, not a track guy trying to play football. And there is a difference. Tebow with room and lowers his shoulder close to a first down. The passion, the fire of Tim Tebow, who is the unquestioned greatest leader in college football today. What an unbelievable player and an even more impressive young man. And that play wasn't just a first down run. That's an energy play for Florida because the fans of Florida love to see number 15 in the open field. And as you described, when he lowered the shoulder and ran over the D-back for an additional couple of yards for the first down, that's Florida Gator football, and it brings the crowd into it for them. You know, in such a cynical, sarcastic society, oftentimes looking for the negative on anybody or anything, if you're fortunate enough to spend five minutes or 20 minutes around Tim Tebow, your life is better for it. Timeout on the field. I'm not sure anybody would have believed with 143 to play in the opening quarter. <laughs> there would be goose eggs on the board. Not when one team's averaging 54 points and the other 45. Look for Florida. If Oklahoma continues to try and bonus up with an eighth guy in the box to go play action early on the early downs. You called it play action. And Tebow just unloads as he is thrown to the deck by Gerald McCoy and Mike Belligan. McCoy, named by the Dallas Morning News as the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Last year, the Defensive Freshman of the Year. Now, that great strategy by Florida goes awry because of a great play by McCoy, number 93. Just beats his man up front and gets into the face of Tebow, not allowing him to step into the throw because there were guys open downfield, but he couldn't get it to them. Second down and 10. Tebow on the option, pitches inside to Aaron Hernandez. 
Pretty nifty pickup right there to the tight end. And let's check in again with Chris Meyer. Well, Tommy, you're talking about defense. You know, both of the team buses for the Gators and the Sooners were delayed in traffic late getting to the stadium. But Bob Stoops was the first person out actually on the field once they arrived. He sat down on the bench, smiled, said, hey, this is the place where we won the 2000 National Championship for Oklahoma. And then he looked around and said, uh, is anybody talking about defense? And so far, that's what we're seeing. Maybe only South Florida traffic can slow down these two teams. <laughs> He's just spent time with us, Chris. We've been talking about it for a while. Third down and a little longer than three. And Hernandez inside the 25. Mike Balligan, number 10 for Oklahoma, getting his second start in the middle. Now watch Hernandez crossing route. That's going to get him. He comes right across the face of number 10. Look for Florida to continue to try to exploit Balligan in coverage. That's Mike Balligan right there, the middle linebacker. Just his second start as an Oklahoma Sooner. Taking a snap this time from center is Jeffrey Demps. And a flag down before the snap in the final offense, seconds of the offense. quarter. False start, 75, offense. It's a five-yard penalty. That's a fifth-year senior, Phil Trotwine, the left tackle. Certainly interested spectators here tonight. Robert Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots. And, of course, alongside... Bill Belichick. The first time Belichick's been able to hang out the first week of January and not work for a long time. I'm surprised he's smiling. You know he's not happy about it. <laughs> He'd rather be coaching. This has been a very disjointed game so far, hasn't it? That's four, 75, offense. That's a five-yard penalty. That's two in a row against Phil Troutwine, the left tackle. Two of the better offensive linemen for both teams have committed two fouls early. Duke Robinson for Oklahoma, Trout Wine for Florida. Urban Meyer saying, come on over. He's saying quarter's over, let's go ahead. Yep. So after 15 minutes of football, the Gators average 45. The Sooners average almost 55. And we are scoreless in Miami. First and 15 at the Oklahoma 26-yard line. They're coming after Tebow, and the ball tipped into the air as he took a shot from Travis Lewis. Incomplete. Look like they overloaded him to the left side of the screen. Watch over here. Watch number 28, Travis Lewis. Recruited as a running back and then turned into a safety before they moved him to outside linebacker. He uses his speed to come off the corner. And because they overloaded the line, no one was there to block him. And he hits Tim Tebow and causes the incompletion. Blitz coming again. Tebow steps out of the major trouble and picks up a yard. Tack on five more beyond that. A gain of six in the opening quarter. I mean, these two teams had pretty much run everybody out of the gym. I picked, I picked up the phone today and talked to a Division I-A coach whose team is finishing in the top 15 in the country this year. And he said, one big key, both teams have to survive the first quarter because the rush comes at you, the onslaught. Both teams did that. Third down and nine for the Gators. Thibault looking around, still looking, throws, caught. And is it a touchdown or is the ball loose? It is a touchdown. The senior out of St. Petersburg, Lewis Murphy, his seventh touchdown reception. Oklahoma came with a zone blitz and dropped the All-American Gerald McCoy out of the line of scrimmage when they didn't get the Tebow. 
And it certainly looks like it's going to be a touchdown. He crossed the plane before the ball popped out of his hand. Unquestionable. But when McCoy dropped down, tried to cover, unable to do so, Tebow bought time. Jonathan Phillips tacks on the point after. For the senior, Lewis Murphy, the Gators' leading receiver on the year with the game's first score. To Lewis Murphy. Joaquin Iglesias from the seven. And he's all the way out to the 35-yard line. I know the Oklahoma side was saying, hey, are we sure we have a touchdown here as we see Murphy go down on the tackle by Franks? There he's down, but extending the football for the goal line. And when he gets it to the goal line, watch his hand cross with the ball, cross the plane of the goal line before it bounces out. Once it crosses the plane, touchdown. Top of Dave Perry, director of officials up here in the booth with us. He confirmed an excellent call. Chris Brown with some daylight and his first pickup of the night a big one a gain of 16 on the carry by Brown so Brown the man on the main stage again as he was in 06 when he replaced Adrian Peterson and Alan Patrick watch the left side of the offensive line by Oklahoma they talk all the time about Oklahoma pass protecting there they are chopping a hole in the Florida defense in the run game Patrick another big gainer and all the way down to the 34-yard line, it's Chris Brown, the leading rusher this season, despite only starting one game. DeMarco Murray was their regular starter, both carrying for over 1,000 yards. And notice the tempo of Oklahoma now, a lot quicker on this drive. The first two plays were bang, bang, right at Florida. Now they're back looking at the sideline again. I think Florida likes it when they spend a lot of time looking at the sideline. It helps them settle. They've got that lead Bocker now in there. Brody Eldridge and Brown to the open field. Three straight carries and three big ones for the Sooners. Tom, you know what helped transform the season for Oklahoma? The loss to Texas. And Brody Eldridge is one of the better blockers in the nation, the best one for Oklahoma. He's playing fullback now. But the loss to Texas, they said they had to run it more. Bradford. Caught by Cheney down to the seven, another Oklahoma first down. Tom, again, the tempo is picked up for Oklahoma. Straight away, getting right at Florida. And this is the tempo Oklahoma likes to play, putting Florida on their heels a bit. But this drive's all about the offensive line for Oklahoma right now. Again, Eldridge lined up in the I formation. The lead blocker this time for Madhu. And he stopped for a gain of one. Ryan Stamper, the junior out of Jacksonville on the tackle. I go back to the Texas game, Tom. Oklahoma only ran it for 48 yards in that game. The offensive line went to Kevin Wilson and said, hey, we got we to start mauling some people. We got to start firing out. And they started doing that. And the offense really picked up the pace from that point forward. Two tight ends in the game. Gresham, Mann, Eldridge. And Bradford out of the shotgun on second and goal. Fake it to Cheney, Bradford to the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma's Jermaine Gresham. scoring in the first 15 minutes in three minutes and 11 seconds we have 14 on the board point after by the redshirt freshman Jimmy Stevens he is good Jermaine Gresham his fourth touchdown reception in the last four games Matthew Moreland to kick it away Brandon James from the three. 
Excellent kickoff coverage by Oklahoma. That has not been the case through most of this entire season. And of course, this weekend, the big fellas, the NFC's top two teams back in action start on Saturday. The Arizona Cardinals and the Carolina Panthers, and Sunday, the Eagles take on the Giants. Coverage begins with America's number one pregame show, Saturday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, then Sunday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, in high definition, only on Fox. Bo runs the option, pitches to Dempsey, and he is dropped in the backfield by big Gerald McCoy. Be a loss of four. Oklahoma is not a, a big blitz team, but they're trying to win the early downs against Florida because Florida converts third down at a 49% rate. So Oklahoma trying to get them into second and long, third and long. They're used to being in second and medium, third and short. That allows Oklahoma to win field position and get them to turn the ball over. Empty backfield. Tebow feeling the pressure and delivers a strike to Lewis Murphy out to the 35, and he took a lick, and a late flag comes in. Now another comes in. I feel that might be for some demonstration or some talking, but everyone talks about this young man and his ability to throw the football, and a lot of people question it. But how many games have we watched where he's delivered a strike so many on so many occasions? The results of the play is a first down and a reception. After the play was over, we have a dead ball and unsportsmanlike conduct. Number nine for accepting the celebration. It's a 15 yard penalty, first down. That's Lewis Murphy, the son of a Baptist minister, stirring things up after that catch. So they'll back him up after the big completion. Well, we met Dad the other day at the Florida practice. I have a feeling he may have a few words for his son after the ball game. Penalties are even right now, but that was a big one. They keep the first down, but it hurts them field position. 15 yards. That's a big one for Florida, which prides itself on winning the field position battle in most ball games. Make it to Harvin and then Frank Alexander wraps up Tebow. Let's check in once again with Chris Meyer. Well, Lewis Murphy, a young man who had some problems and understandable, his mother passing away in February, and his father saying that Urban Meyer was there through his mother's illness, and he stayed the night after his mom had passed away. And, and Lewis had some problems, some emotional issues dealing with the loss of his mother, also with the football team. And the father of Lewis Murphy said, if it wasn't for Urban Meyer, I don't know if my son would have made it to this point. And that was part of the speech before this game. Urban Meyer talked about family supporting each other in a game like this. Great stuff, Chris Myers. This is Percy Harvin. Harris missed him. And then Keenan Clayton able to wrap him up at the 27-yard line. It'll be third down and less than four for Florida. 9.50 to play until halftime. A 7-7 game with Chris Myers, Charles Davis, and our entire Fox crew off Tom Brenneman from Miami, the FedEx BCS National Championship game. Notice how Oklahoma is trying to crowd the line of scrimmage and create mismatches with extra guys early in the down count. First and second down. As it goes on, they like to show blitz and get out and go to coverage. Let's see what they do here on third and five. Catch by Harvard, and that is a first down. He found the sticks at the 30, got to the 31, and they'll move them forward. Brent Venables decided to go after Tim Tebow on that play. But he found the hot receiver versus the blitz, able to deliver the ball before the pressure could get in his face. Florida won its first three games this season, including victories over Miami and Tennessee. Then the final weekend of September, stunned in the swamp by Old Miss. A game which they lost three fumbles. Tim Tebow sacked three times and only rushed for 124 yards in that game, their second lowest total of the year. But then in their final nine games, they averaged almost 270 rushing yards per game. Coming up on the Southwest Halftime Report, Chris Rose, Jimmy Johnson, Barry Switzer, and Eddie George will have the first half analysis, followed by performances from the Florida and Oklahoma marching bands. 
See if Florida tries to get some type of misdirection, crossing routes again. That's where they've been very successful, trying to work against the linebackers of Oklahoma. Tebow will keep it. And they've really bottled him up in the run game. In fact, they have bottled up this entire Gator run game. Done a nice job. That means the defensive line of Oklahoma is winning its battles versus the offensive line of Florida. Able to take the space, take the gaps, what people call run fits. Everyone in the right gap, in the right spot. Nowhere for Tebow to go. Third and five. Intercepted. And down to the 27 yard line again. It's Big Gerald McCoy. How about the zone blitz on the touch? Watch in the middle here. He's going to back off, and then he becomes the guy. Talk about Gerald McCoy. They had two guys, both in the middle Adrian Taylor, 86. Gerald McCoy, 93, the two defensive tackles, faked the rush, dropped into zone coverage. Tim Tebow didn't read it correctly, threw it right to the defensive tackle. Tebow has thrown as many interceptions in the game tonight as he threw for the entire season, 13 games. Let's see if Oklahoma tries to attack right now off of a sudden change with the most accurate thrower in the game and the Heisman Trophy winner. They're going to hand it to Brown inside the 20. Run out of bounds inside the 10. Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator for Florida, said we cannot let Oklahoma run the football. Oklahoma is running the football at will right now. The left side of the line, Phil Lodeholt, 79, Duke Robinson, 72, and John Cooper, the center, number 50. Plus, they're getting help from their tight end and fullback. Look at those numbers for Chris Brown. And they say he's not the home run hitter. But if you look at the numbers through the year, Tom, he had more 20 yard runs than DeMarco Murray had. So he can move it better than what people give him credit for. And there are those that will tell you that that Chris Brown, only a junior, has a very bright future, not only at Oklahoma, but beyond. He's so versatile. This offensive line for Oklahoma is telling their coaching staff while they look over, will you just keep running the football? Their confidence very high right now that they can create gaps in the Florida defense. Brown again. Cuts it back to the inside. Tripped up inside the five. Down to the four by Janoris Jenkins. Third and goal. If you're an offensive lineman right now, you don't want to hear any call except run the football. You see Charlie Storm try to get this Florida team lined up as the tempo increases for Oklahoma. Brown on third and goal, sniffing the end zone, but apparently just short. All right, decision time go, here. First and goal. Go. You go. 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 Everything's working for them the way they want. You go heavy set right now, and you either pound it at them, or you go play action and throw it into the end zone and find Jermaine Gresham. But this offensive line wants to run the football. Clap and Eldridge check in as extra blockers, along with Gresham, jumbo set. Surprise, they're even hesitating. Let those big guys go. Brown did not get there. A huge stop for the Gator defense on fourth and goal. It was Brandon Spikes and Jermaine Cunningham. On third and goal, that was. Fourth down now, decision time. You keep pounding at them. You don't even stop. I wouldn't even look to the sideline. Brown again and dropped on fourth and goal. Torrey Davis. To go tonight, that young man, Chris Lee, named the BCS National Championship Offensive MVP.
leading the Gators to the victory over the Ohio State Buckeyes. They give it to Harvin, and he's still on his feet and off to the races. Cuts it back to the inside across the 40, all the way out to the 48. A 45-yard run for Percy Harvin. And the little guys from Florida do not mind running inside. Balligan, number 10, misses. Holmes, number 11, misses. Jackson, number two, misses one time and able to bring him down by a shirt tail out near midfield. Well, wondered about Harvin and that injured right ankle coming into the game tonight. So far, so great. Again, the play blown dead. Cross to the snap. False start. 55. Offense. That's a five-yard penalty. That's Mike Pouncing, the Pouncy twins. Mike, the right guard. Twin brother, Marquise, the center. By far the bulk of the penalties tonight, both offensive lines. The big guys anxious to get at someone. Behind the line of scrimmage is Chris Rainey, and again, it's Balligan who's only making his second career start. A 25-year-old who played at Lackawanna Maryland College last year, did not play high school football his junior or senior years in high school. Three years ago was a full-time construction worker, and they found him on an internet recruiting service. Play a little semi-pro ball, the Prince George Jets the Maryland Marauders before he went to Lackawanna. 25 years old, but gaining in confidence on every snap here in the title game. Tebow on second down. What a move by Rainey. And he's tackled at midfield. It will be third down, and you know, we'll call it eight for the Gators, and it looks like Rainey is injured after being tackled along the Gators sideline. The Gators leading rusher this season had to be carried off the playing field. And certainly our thoughts are with him. And there is the horse collar rule in college football but it wasn't determined that that was exactly what happened on that play. Third down Tebow somehow gets away from trouble but he will not have enough for a first down. Going to be about four yards short. And not even debating this call, Urban Meyer will send out the punt team. And, and if you're Oklahoma, as we look at Tim Tebow, uncharacteristic, two interceptions tonight, two all year long. You made the point earlier, Tom. But right now, if you're Oklahoma, you play punt safe because of Florida having the ability to fake a punt. This one. Blasted in the end zone by Chaz Henry. So at 2.32 to play, Oklahoma has two timeouts remaining. Sam Bradford and the Sooners will have it starting at the 20. Now, Tim Tebow, so much made of him, and rightly so. But Sam Bradford won the Heisman Trophy this year. And while the demeanor is different, we see Tim Tebow so passionate, so excitable. Sam Bradford's quiet confidence fuels this Oklahoma team. And his desire to win is no less intense than Tim Tebow's. And pitch it to Moses Madu. And that is good enough for a first down out to the 31 yard line. So we've seen the pace of offense for Oklahoma tonight. Top left corner, that's Kevin Wilson talking on the headset. He's the offensive coordinator orchestrating. 
to the top right. Three coaches, one of them live, the rest of the other guys, they're the dummy signals. Bradford gets the team up on the line, gives a call, a signal, and either goes with it or looks back to the sideline. Open across the middle and close to midfield, making the catch as Iglesias. He took a big hit from Major Wright but hung on. What a beautiful throw by Sam Bradford. The only guy who can rival him for accuracy this year, Colt McCoy at Texas. Both of them excellent throwers. But again, Kevin Wilson, offensive coordinator, he's looking at the defense, trying to find the mismatch they want. If he likes it, if he likes the play, he says go with it. If he doesn't like it, he calls the check, and Sam Bradford gets it from the sideline. Bradford slings it out to Broyles. And he's in the Gator territory at the 46. Clock continues to run for those of you. The difference among many between the pro game and the college game. Obviously, the clock does not stop at the two-minute warning. It, it does stop to set the chains after each first down, so you get a mini timeout that way when you're running two-minute offense. Well, it looks like they want to come after him. And Bradford gets rid of it to Manuel Johnson, who's out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Two timeouts left for the Sooners. A minute 22 to play until halftime in a 7-7 game. How about the adaptability of this Oklahoma offense? Last drive against Charlie Strong's defensive troops, they ran the ball all the way downfield. This time, quick passes. They've gone away from the longer pass routes that we saw in the first drive or two of the game because of the pressure from Florida. Ball getting out of the hand of Sam Bradford quicker. They're coming after Bradford, who gets rid of it to Iglesias. And that'll be a gain of three. Clock down to 115 and running. These Oklahoma receivers are answering the challenge from the Florida secondary tonight, Tom. They're being challenged, pressed, harassed, as they haven't been for a long time this season. And the Oklahoma receivers are showing quite well thus far. Bradford to the tight end, Gresham. And he stays in bounds and is chopped down at the 33-yard line. Clock down to 47, and now Oklahoma will spend a timeout. One left for the Sooners. Forty-seven seconds left until halftime. A third down for Oklahoma. And it looked like forward progress on the catch by Iglesias was enough for a first down. They will stop the clock, move the chains, and then start the clock again. And this is where Oklahoma's tempo helps them. They're used to playing this fast. Bradford to a wide open receiver. Broyles, he's inside the 20, still on his feet, down to the 17 yard line. Clock will stop again. And it's another, it should be another first down, shouldn't it? Yep. And it's another first down, as you said, stops the clock, conserves the timeouts for Oklahoma. Being up tempo all the time, serving them well. Blitz coming, and Bradford just throws it away. What a smarter throw. Sorry about that, partner. What a smarter throws of the night by Sam Bradford because he understands the clock situation too. Get it out of your hands on that one. Live to fight another down. You don't need to try and scramble around and possibly take a sack and eat up time. Anybody you like that you look for here? Well, Iglesias is his number one target. That's who he feels most comfortable with. But if you get a matchup with Gresham and a wide receiver, number 18, I mean a, a linebacker, take that one right there if you get it. Blitz coming again. And thrown behind the intended target, Chris Brown. Heavy pressure that time by Dunlap who leads the Gators in sacks with nine. Right up the middle, gut pressure against the Oklahoma offensive line. Charlie Strong, the D coordinator for Florida, is not going to sit back on very many plays all evening. Bradford finds Gresham, and he is chopped down close to another first down. It looks like he has it at the six. And again, they will spot the ball, 10 seconds left here, and then start the clock. As fast as Oklahoma gets ready. Iglesias isolated to the top of your screen. 
But Bradford not looking that way. It's batted in the air and intercepted by Major Wright. So here you have two quarterbacks, Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks, who have thrown a total of eight interceptions all year, three tonight. And the ball bouncing off of Manny Johnson as it was played and contested by Joe Hayden. How many other guys touched it? Black 35, 41 stamper. Ball goes in the air. There's Black keeping it alive. Look at that, Wright finally coming up with the football. And Florida foils him again at the goal line. What, what would what'd we say about offenses? coming in this game I don't remember a thing 54 about that 54 and 45 <laughs> what a great job by Florida on two different defensive stands we knew Florida's defense had been dynamite statistically all year Oklahoma's defense has been mighty impressive through the first half tonight guys standing by in Los Angeles with the Southwest halftime show a 7-7 game in Miami Set to begin the second half in Miami, the FedEx BCS National Championship game. Florida and Oklahoma even at seven. And the Florida Gators will get the football to begin the second half. Two interceptions thrown in the first half by Tim Tebow. He had thrown two interceptions all year. But Florida's defense twice with huge stops inside the 10 against Oklahoma. Brandon James just does avoid stepping out of bounds, fielding the kickoff, and brings it out to the 28. Let's check in downstairs with Chris Meyer. Tommy, the good news for Florida, Percy Harvin has checked out okay and good to go the rest of the game. They're going to try and wrap the ankle of Chris Rainey. There's a chance the running back could play in the second half, but Urban Meyer said look for two things. More pressure from us. We're going to blitz Bradford, and we're, offense needs to be in sync. We need to run inside. I asked what he liked, what he didn't like in the first half. He said, I liked our defensive stand. Other than that, I didn't like bleep. <laughs> Succinct and to the point. Harbin in motion, and they give it to Demps. And just no running game whatsoever for Florida. How about on the Oklahoma side, Chris? Uh, Bob Stoops was smiling a little bit more confident about his offensive line, moving around Austin English and Beal on the defensive line. He said that got Tim Tebow out of his comfort zone, thus leading to a couple of interceptions. He didn't regret going for it on fourth down and didn't regret the, uh, regret the uh, effective pass that led to an interception, killing a chance for a field goal. Stoops said, we'll be aggressive on offense. That's the way we play. Second down and 10. They give it to Demps again and just bottled up this Florida ground game, which averages 230 rushing yards per game. Very, very quiet. You look at the season averages for this team, two of the top three scoring teams in the country. Through the first half, Oklahoma averages 35, Florida 23, each with a touchdown tonight. Well, one stat did hold up for both teams, Tom. Neither is trailed at the half in any game this year. Oklahoma's been getting a lot of pressure on Tim Tebow. No sacks, but they have disrupted the timing of his passing game. And he's hit as he throws here. And just beyond the reach of Percy Harvin. You wonder if that ankle is 100% rather than 90%. Does he run that one down? Also, the pressure in the face of Tebow, left side of your screen, number 28, Travis Lewis. I think that helped disrupt the timing of the pass because Tim Tebow couldn't really step and throw the way he wanted to. He had to get rid of it in the direction of Percy Harvin a little bit too long. They'll come back to that play. He was wide open. They've got to be able to block the guy on the edge, though, for him to throw it accurately. Excellent punt by Henry. And Boyles, the fair catch at the 11-yard line. An early stop for the Sooners. Bradford and company when we return. Here are tonight's Taco Bell Impact players of the game. Percy Harvin, seven touches, whopping 94 yards from scrimmage. Sam Bradford, 
The Oklahoma quarterback and Heisman Trophy winner has hit on 17 of 23, 145 yards, a touchdown, and an interception down at the goal line. I thought as the half wore on, Oklahoma started to take charge offensively and defensively. The Florida's two goal line stands kept the game even. Chris Brown had an excellent opening half carrying the football. 12 carries, 79 yards, so he's averaging just under seven yards per carry thus far. Chris Myers told us that Urban Meyer said they want to blitz more on defense. If that's the case, Look for the one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter. Brown trying to turn the corner. Boy, when Major Wright hits you, you'll feel it in a major wrong way. Oh, can he hit? What do you say? He hit Chris Brown so hard, Moses Madu felt it. <laughs> <laughs> but he hit Manny Johnson early in the game, and Manny bounced back and came back and played well in the rest of the half. If Florida decides to get after him, look for the one-on-one -on -one battles with receivers and DBs. And right now, that would be Iglesias on Hayden. But they're going to run it on third down. And it's very close. Needed to get to the 22-yard line. It looks like he got there. Yeah, I think he got it. Based on the upfield foot being the spot, that should be a first down for Oklahoma. And it has to feel good for Oklahoma to be able to run it on a run down and pick up the first down. Again, Kevin Wilson, top left-hand side, top left-hand box. He's the offensive coordinator. He's orchestrating. Coaches on the side, right top right box. They're the signalers. Bradford down the sideline to Iglesias. Incomplete. Perhaps hearing footsteps, Joaquin Iglesias go back to the first half that same route to Manny Johnson you remember what happened on that one major Wright lit him up on the sideline this time Iglesias unable to haul it in a well thrown ball by Sam Bradford boy is he accurate man architectural like precision from Sam Bradford Second and long, Florida's going to get after him here. Well, they dropped back. Yep, fooled me. Incomplete pass, incomplete immediately on the call. So it'll be third down and ten. Great job by Joe Hayden, number five, putting the hit on Jermaine Gresham. We look at the first half numbers. Oklahoma winning the rushing battle. Pass yards pretty even, total yards pretty even. First downs, Oklahoma, the turnovers. Two by Tim Tebow, one by Sam Bradford. Those stats indicative of a 7-7 game at the half. Well, they dropped last time, rushed three and dropped eight. What now? I think they're coming. Third down, Gresham on the catch. Runs through one tackle from Dunlap, but is denied first down yardage, and Oklahoma has to punt it on its opening possession of the second half. So how did Florida win that possession? They won first down. You win the early down. You go from first and 10 to second and 10 and more. Advantage shifts to the defense. They made it third and 10, ended up winning the whole battle. You can't say it enough. The Florida Gators blocked eight kicks this season, five punts. The play was blown dead. I think Oklahoma may have called Time a timeout. Timeout on the field. Oklahoma was the first choice timeout of the second half. Bob Stoops must have saw something that he thought where they were misaligned. But well, now Oklahoma, after spending a timeout, they were misaligned, didn't have the proper alignment, wanted to make sure they didn't get one blocked. And then flags come down. There was movement along the line of scrimmage. I tell you what, this Florida. Cross to the snap. Full start. 27 offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Still full snap. 
They'll scare you to death now because they they so frequently block punts or at least get heavy pressure if not blocking a punt. If it's a tennis match those are two unforced errors but it's made because of what you've done in the past your reputation scares the team into making other errors. And once again the flow of this game Timeout. slowing down Timeout on the field Florida. This we have a had a second. timeout before timeout. this punt. We've had a penalty before the punt, and now another timeout by Florida. Here's tonight's taking away game summary takeaways. Rare during the regular season, we've had three tonight. <laughs> yeah, it seems like they've been saving them all up. These are two teams that in this, during the season, Oklahoma turned it over nine times, and Florida turned it over 11 times, a combined three tonight. And it all adds up to a 7-7 game. Look at that, two takeaways by the Sooners. They had 32 in the regular season, two more tonight. But look at the big one. Points off the turnovers, zero for each team. But points taken off the board for Oklahoma. That would be 14 that we're seeing there. Well, you know, one of them off a turnover, one of them off of a goal line stand. They're coming to get it. And they got him. And a penalty flag is down. You just wonder, did they get a piece of the ball? That's what they're going to try and claim, I would imagine. But I think that they're going to end up with a penalty. William Green, number yep. 96, appeared to be the guy who got there first. First and foul. This is the danger if you don't get it. There it is. And William Green is a true freshman. Wrong angle approaching the punter. You've got to angle yourself so you come across the front of his foot. So if you don't get the ball, you miss his body. And when you talk to Urban Meyer, he is a man who bases game planning, clock management, even recruiting on statistical analysis. And he says, if you ask me, if you ask anybody on our team, if we block a punt, we win the game better than 92% of the time. That's why they stress going and getting it so frequently. Gives Oklahoma's offense another opportunity, though, just like basketball, an extra possession for the Sooners. Moses Madu, the handoff, and he's tracked down by Jermaine Cunningham along with help from Spikes. So you give the highest scoring team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners, the football back. There's a lot of cat and mouse that went into that block, that attempted block punt, didn't it? And ultimately advantaged Oklahoma. Trips to the right, and they hand it off again to Madu. And this time it's Dunlap there to meet him. Ball control numbers fairly even. Just about a wash between the two. Yards, time of possession, everything. Huge third and long. Florida has come after him on third and long, and they've shown it and dropped into coverage. Certainly looks like pressure coming now, by the way. <laughs> Brandon Spikes approached it. Bradford steps up and incomplete right into triple coverage. He had an eye on Ryan Broyles. So after roughing the kicker, Oklahoma given a fresh set of downs, and it's three and out. And now the defensive backs for Florida starting to assert themselves a little bit, getting pressure from the front guys and able to snug up to the receivers and play good coverage in the secondary. Do you come after it hard again if you're Florida? I think, I think you want the football right now. You want the football, try to get your offense on track. Well, you called it. Brandon James. Fields. And is dropped at the 25-yard line. 7-7. Seven, seven. The FedEx BCS National Championship. 9.43 to play in the third quarter. Fake it to Harvin. Tebow rolls. And the catch is made by Tebow's roommate, Riley Cooper, the junior out of Clearwater. Be a part of history as a new champion is crowned and Fox Sports presents for the first time ever a live webcast of the BCS championship game. BCS Live allows you to customize your view with six different camera angles. Log on right now to foxsports.com on MSN to be a part of history. 
Catch by Riley, good enough for a first down. Tebow on the option, he'll keep it. And runs right through Nick Harris. A gain of 13 close to midfield. First time tonight, Tebow ignites the crowd. He does it again with a physical run. We're back to first and 10. Florida trying to find a way to get that eighth man out of the box for Oklahoma and make them pay. The quarterback run series is a start. Gators will play in the second half without Chris Rainey injured in the first half. So Jeffrey Demps, the true freshman, picks up a yard on first down, stopped by Austin English. Tom, take a look at what Florida's having to go against. Watch Nick Harris, the safety. He's going to walk up and become that extra guy in the box, which hurts you trying to run the football. See what they call run fits? Everyone takes a hole and a gap, and the tackle's made. Tebow keeps it himself. And he's to the 46-yard line, tackled by Travis Lewis. It's hard to believe we're talking these two teams in a 7-7 game midway through the third quarter. And now every third down becomes so important. Now Brett Venables, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, has to decide whether he wants to try and heat up Tim Tebow and put his corners on a little bit of an island with the speedsters of Florida. That's Hernandez, the third guy in, always a good target. Tebow fakes the throw, carries for a first down. Dan Mullen decides to spread out Oklahoma and go to the quarterback draw, fake it, and look at the block right there by number 56, Marquise Pouncey. The center, that was the key block of the play. Able to move him out of the way and clear a path for his quarterback. A gain of 15 by Tebow, first and 10 at the Oklahoma 31. It's a good time to take a shot if you're Florida on first down. They've been running the ball consistently on that down. They're gonna throw it. Tebow looking for Murphy in the end zone off the fingertips. They must have hurt you, Mr. Davis. And Lewis Murphy down at the end of the play. Not a sight Florida wants to see. He already has an injured left knee. And that looked to be the knee he was grabbing. Just outstretched as Lindy Holmes tries to cover at the end, but it was a great call by Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator, soon to be the head coach at Mississippi State. But Florida on second and 10 at the Oklahoma 31. Tebow works from the shotgun. Percy Harvin into the boundary, bottom of your screen. Tebow down the middle for Harvin, and broken up nicely by Brian Jackson. There's the national championship winning quarterback for Florida, the starter. When we saw them in Glendale, Arizona, beat Ohio State, Chris Leak, the MVP of that game. And here's a successor who won a Heisman Trophy as a first-year starter at the University of Florida, Tim Tebow. Big third and long situation. Tebow will run it. Needs to get to the 21. He does, and then some to the 19. Wow. Desire. Power. What did we say at the top of the show, Tom? He runs it, he throws it, he wills his team on. And that was desire and will on that run with a great cutback inside of Travis Lewis, the leading tackler for Oklahoma. You know, they gained the first down, but they gained the passion too. Crowd into it. 
Tebow juiced up. Florida trying to pay off this drive. Oklahoma may have to think about getting after him a little bit here. Tebow on the option. He'll keep it. And picks up solid yardage. Down to the 12-yard line. Second and short for the Gators. You get Lindy Holmes, the safety. Keenan Clayton, who's a linebacker hybrid strong safety. Frank Alexander, defensive end, and Adrian Taylor inside the leading tacklers. But I'm getting the sense here, Tom, that Dan Mullen now wants the ball in Tim Tebow's hands as much as possible. Wouldn't you? Oh, of course. Option again. And again, Tebow waits for the last second to Dips. And that'll be a face mask. Dips is down to the two. And then the flag came in. It looked like somebody got a piece of his face mask. And love the call. Tebow had two ways to go, actually three ways. Run it himself, pitch it on the option as he did, or he could have pitched the shovel pass inside First to Hernandez. Five. First five. Defense. Half the distance the goal. Watch. Five. There's Hernandez, 81 inside. Then there's Dips outside, number two, catching the football. And then there's the face mask by Nick Harris, number five. The obvious pull and twist, which leads to the flag. Javier Estepina has checked in, 93 as an extra blocker. Tebow will not get there. We've already seen a pair of goal line stops. Both by the Florida defense, does Bob Stoops' defense have a stop in him inside the two? I think at this stage, you're really trying to hug the line of scrimmage with your guys, and you've got to get penetration in order to get into the backfield and get Tebow stopped before he can get started. But the option has been good to Florida in these types of situations. They fake it one way. And throwing into the end zone, looked like that ball was dropped. It was a low throw. It is incomplete. And he, I'm sorry, Tom, he had to throw it behind him a little because watch on the fake and watch where the ball has to go because of the defender. Tebow trying to keep it away from Lendy Holmes, throws it to the only spot his receiver has a chance to catch it, but it's an incomplete pass. Third and goal. I keep it in the hands of Tebow, but I like option here. I like giving him a couple of options, but looks like, is that Percy Harvin, Wildcat? Yep. Harvin will take the snap and tries to bring it in and finds the end zone. smile as we're going to get <laughs> from Urban Meyer. Jonathan Phillips for the point after. 14-7 Florida jumps in front in the third. Look at this just zone blocking to the right side. Demps helps out but Harvin finds the crease and powers in. We met this young man the other day and he looks like a speedster but the, the guns on him right the pipes He's a 405 pound bencher, works out very hard in the weight room, and he ran that play with a lot of power. Great job. And I actually asked the Florida coach, said, what do you call that formation? You know, everybody's got a wild cat and a wild hog. And they said, Percy, take the snap. We don't have a name for it. But, we do, know, but we do know what the end result, don't we? Touchdown, Florida. Tim Tebow, of course, after their only loss against Ole Miss, came out and said, I can't guarantee we'll win every game. What I can guarantee is no player will work harder, no player will push his teammates harder, and no team will practice and play harder than we will the rest of this year. God bless. He walked off the stage. They have not lost since. In fact, they've not been challenged since until the SEC championship game.
9 and 0 since then. They won their last six regular season games by 28 points or more to me in the SEC. Just phenomenal run down the stretch. Sturgis puts a foot on it. This is Joaquin Iglesias from the seventh. Great coverage by the Gators and Iglesias able to tiptoe along the sideline. And here are those words from Tebow after the loss to Ole Miss. I'm sorry, uh, extremely sorry. You know, we we're hoping for an undefeated season. That was my goal. Southern Florida's never done here. But I promise you one thing, a lot of good will come out of this. You have never seen any player in the entire country play as hard as I will play the rest of the season. And you never see someone push the rest of the team as hard as I will push everybody the rest of the season. And you never see a team play harder than we will the rest of the season. God bless. Now it's Sam Bradford's turn to rally his team. First down. They fake the handoff, and Bradford cut from behind by Dunlap. And then Dustin Doe finished him up high. When we talked to Charlie Strong at the meeting, he's, who did he indicate to us, Tom, would have a big game? This guy, number eight, Carlos Dunlap. He says this is his type of a game, speed rusher going after the quarterback. He's been wreaking havoc as the game has worn on. Drop back into coverage on second down and 14. And the catch is good for a first down out to midfield of the senior, Quinton Chaney. Chaney in the Fiesta Bowl a season ago, 129 receiving yards. I think Charlie Strong and his defensive staff will file that snap away. Had him on the run, and here's a quick snap by Oklahoma. A wide open receiver, Iglesias breaks a tackle. Still on his feet, spun out of bounds at the 35. That's another first down. And an extra 10 yards after the catch by breaking the initial tackle. But I think Florida backing off and giving Bradford time. Deadly when he throws the football. And Trent Williams, number 71, their starting tackle, comes off the field for Oklahoma. They hand it off to Brown, who slips a tackle. And he's down to the 32-yard line. That'll be a gain of five for Brown. Who's closing in on 100 yards, now 94 rushing yards in the game. Brandon Braxton, number 76, now in the game at right tackle for Oklahoma, and the pace quickens for the OU offense. You can't relax for a second against them. Wide receiver screen, and very close to a first down, it's the redshirt freshman Ryan Broyles. These great pictures sitting right above the playing field brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Third down and a yard for the Sooners. leads the way in the I formation and drop for a loss is Brown. Ryan Stamper. The penetration. Watch up front. Stamper number 41, the first guy there, takes on the block, slips it inside, and throws Chris Brown for a loss. Well, they initially sent out the field goal team. Then Bradford stayed out there as if they were going on fourth down. And now it will be a field goal try. 39-yard line, so a 49-yard attempt. The season long for Jimmy Stevens is 42. Good snap, good hold, and it's blocked. The ninth blocked kick of the year for the Gators. Tom, as often happens on a long field goal attempt, the field goal kicker's got to drive it. He ends up kicking it low. 
because you see where it was blocked in the middle. Was that Dunlap number eight? Hard to see the number, but it looks like Dunlap number eight is the guy who got into the middle and batted it back. Yes, right there, Lawrence Marsh, number 90, also there, but I think Dunlap will get credit for it, but it was kicked low to begin with. And if it was Dunlap, that's his third block kick this season. He had two and one game against Vanderbilt. Tebow on first down. Picked up a couple of yards. Tom well, here with 120 left in the third quarter, Oklahoma still sitting on seven. And there's no bigger defensive stand than right now for Oklahoma in this game. Florida just scored. They blocked the kick. And now they have the ball back. And now they're looking at the left knee, it appears, of Lewis Murphy. We told you he was already injured with the left knee Could coming he, into this game. Yeah, he was already hurt. Couldn't get off the line of scrimmage. Second down, they give it to Harbin. And coming down the line of scrimmage to wrap him up and throw him to the deck is Adrian Taylor. Under a minute to play in the third. And you talked about how important this defensive stand series is for Oklahoma. This is a third down, and we'll call it four. And another injured player. Got to wonder if this is just more cramping. That's Taylor who made the tackle. Adrian Taylor plays inside with his roommate Gerald McCoy the two defensive tackles who played so well all season long Adrian Taylor battled back from a significant back injury last year to get back onto the field and have a very nice season. Pretty good numbers on third down for the Gators and this is third down. If he's out quarterback draw is always a fun one for them. Tebow chased, caught from behind by Beal. And the Gators will have to punt it. Jeremy Beal led the Sooners in sacks this season as well as tackles for loss and comes up with a big play right there on third down. Can't underestimate how big a play that was by Jeremy Beal. Everything had shifted to Florida's side. Scored, blocked the kick, had the ball. Oklahoma will get it back now. So the punt will take place when we begin the fourth quarter. 15 minutes to play for Miami in the FedEx BCS National Championship. Oklahoma trails Florida 14-7. A seven-point spread, 15 minutes to go in the FedEx BCS National Championship game. A booming punt by Henry. Fielded. By Broyles, a real nice return out to the 23 yard line. Oklahoma's offense had scored 60 or more points in five consecutive games coming into this championship. And here they are beginning the fourth quarter with just seven on the board. Well, the fourth quarter is underway in Miami. With Charles Davis, Chris Myers, our entire Fox crew, great to have you with us. We will crown a champion of college football tonight. Number two, Florida, leads number one, Oklahoma, by seven. Looks like they're going to measure to see if Chris Brown picked up a first down. I am so impressed with him as a runner tonight. The movements he makes, the subtle movements to gain additional yardage. No wasted motion out of that young man. Short of a first down. Tom, you know, the first two years of Chris Brown's career, Nody gained total 954 yards. This past season, 1,110 yards. Well, when you get carries, you can have production. Well, yeah, when you play behind Adrian Peterson, you're not going to get Alan carries. Patrick and DeMarco Murray. going to make things a little difficult. Yeah. But that big offensive line and Chris Brown's own talent led to a big season for him. Second down in a yard and Brown has a first down to the 35. Oklahoma. 
Notice Duke Robinson not in the lineup at left guard. Brian Simmons, number 74, in his stead for Oklahoma. Robinson, a couple of huge penalties in that first half. Raced a huge gain to Jermaine Gresham, but it put him in great shape early. Blake clock down to four. Bradford just does get it off. Brown wrapped up by Stamper. And that'll be a gain of three on first down. Let's take a look at our forward game summary quickly. As a penalty flag comes in late, Tim Tebow doing it through the air and on the ground. That's nothing new. Percy Harvin now a touchdown in 15 straight games that he has played in. He did not play in the SEC championship, you may remember, with the injured ankle. And Brown now over 100 yards on his 19 carries. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, 95 defense. 15 yards for himself. Now, Torrey Davis made one of the game's biggest plays. The fourth down stop inside the two. And now a silly mistake by the sophomore. The sportsmanlike conduct, that's a penalty you just can't have in this situation. Your increased field position for Oklahoma. Give Sam Bradford a bigger playbook to operate from. After the penalty, Bradford at the 47 lays it off for Brown out of the backfield. And a big gainer inside the 25 down to the 21 yard line. Major right running Brown out of bounds. That'll be a gain of 25. Love the call by Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator. He sees man to man coverage from Florida's corners, isolates the running back against a linebacker swinging out of the backfield, and you end up with a big play. There's a lot of jawing going along that offensive line. I mean, guys yelling and screaming at each other. I know there's passion and intensity and a will to win. Focus on the task, both teams. Don't cost your team at this stage of the game. Both teams pride themselves on big plays. Probably both well, not probably, they're both well below their average in this game. Brown. One out of bounds by Spike to the 20. That'll be a gain of two. Took a look at the play call. Kevin Wilson, top left box, making the play call. Signal, top right box. Three guys, one guy live. Bradford gets it, initiates the play. Bradford hit as he throws. And he took a major shot from Brandon Hicks coming off the outside from the line backing position. Remember early in the game, Oklahoma was able to isolate Jermaine Gresham, their tight end number 18 on linebackers of Florida. Now, they're utilizing a secondary guy to cover Jermaine Gresham, number 10, Will Hill. Third down and eight. They're coming after Bradford. He gets it away. Gresham has a first down to the 11-yard line. That's the man you figured they'd be looking for. He got locked up in coverage with Major Wright. He's your best match, whether it's a linebacker left of your screen, number 18, whether it's a linebacker or a secondary guy, and Major Wright isn't their best cover guy. Better in run support. There's Gresham, and he's into the end zone. He lost his shoe after losing a defender. And now for the all-important point after. You don't have to tell the Gators about that. They had a blocked PAT in their one-point loss to Ole Miss. Tie game. Well, well, well. 
Well, 13 to go, boys and girls, and we are tied for the FedEx National Championship. Here's a kickoff. And this is Brandon James, who's never returned to kickoff for a touchdown and great kickoff coverage. A major weakness for the Sooners all year long, and it's been mighty good tonight. Brett Bauer is the first man down the field. Extra 30 plus days of practice put to good use by the special teams, especially the kickoff coverage team of Oklahoma. 78,468 in attendance. That's the highest mark for any football game ever played in this stadium, pro or college. College football alive and well. And how about the momentum swings in this game? For a while, old Mo was riding with Florida. Now, jumping into a crimson jersey. Harvin on first down in the open field. And along the sideline, this is Percy Harvin to the 40, the 30, all the way down to the 27. <laughs> 52 yards for Harvin who on six carries has 105 rushing yards. Great job with the blocking coming back. Great job, Riley Cooper, number 11, blocking downfield. You know what I've discovered, Tom? Old Mo is not someone you want to date. Old Mo is awfully fickle. <laughs> You're talking about Old Mo momentum, uh, one yes. of the great front runners. One of the great front runners of all time and not really ready to declare a winner, is it? Harvin will get it again and again with room to run to the 15. Yeah, fans like to see him. They actually trotted off the field, so made the Florida fans feel a lot better. Tim Tebow on first down will get it to Dents, and they couldn't turn the corner. Second down at the 10. Tebow looking down the field, being chased, and just throws it away. He was taken to the deck by Frank Alexander. So third down for the Gators at the 11. And the hard part for Brett Venables is trying to decide how to chess match with Florida because of their ability to have the quarterback run game with Tebow and the option ability. We've also seen the shovel pass to Aaron Hernandez. So if you max blitz him against those types of plays, it's tough. Lewis Murphy has come back on. We saw him leave. Percy Harvin is back in on third and six. Harvin in the slot to the top of your screen. Empty backfield. Tebow looking around. Still looking, being chased. Not sure what happened there, and he just throws it away. Did he see? Did it seem like he thought there was a whistle yes. blown? Did it I, see, see, he's signaling right now. He tucked the ball like he thought the play was dead. And the officials are not indicating that at all. And we're going to have to have a field goal attempt by Florida. There may have been a whistle that came from the stands, perhaps. All right, 14-14 game, 10-48 to play. Looks like they're going to kick this one from the 18, so a 28-yard field goal drive for Jonathan Phillips. Had only three field goal attempts in the last eight games of the year. From the left hash, it is good. 10.45 to go. Florida 17, Oklahoma 14. 10.45 to play in regulation in this FedEx BCS National Championship game. Second ranked Florida leading number one Oklahoma. This is Iglesias out to the 35-yard line. Well, coming up on the Southwest Post Game Report, Chris Rose, Jimmy Johnson, Barry Switzer, Eddie George will have all the post game analysis. That'll be followed by the BCS National Championship Trophy presentation. Well, Sam Bradford, the redshirt sophomore out of Putnam City North High School in Oklahoma City. First-team All-American this year's Heisman Trophy winner. 
Can he put together a drive to give the Sooners the lead. They just do get it off. Lofted down the sideline and complete. Let's check in downstairs with Chris Myers. Well, the common low key Sam Bradford in the first half when his offensive line had penalties, he made sure he came over and said, Don't sweat it. On the fourth down failed attempt, he told the running back to hang in there. He was encouraging to the defense after that last drive. He may be soft spoken, but when it's time to speak up, he speaks up and steps up. Second and ten. Bradford, great protection. Finds Brown out of the backfield, and that's a first down reception to the 47 yard line. Brown has had an outstanding game tonight. He has. He's done it with his feet, doing it, he's done it catching the football. And Chris Myers made the point about Sam Bradford's style of leadership, different than Tim Tebow's, but no less effective. Brown continues to break tackles. Until he ran in to Brandon Spikes crossing midfield or right at midfield, a gain of three. It's a big down here for the Florida defense if they want to try and put pressure on Bradford because he can still run the ball here on second and seven. Madu checks in for Brown. Blitz coming. And Bradford down the middle of the field. Was it intercepted or just broken up? They're saying intercepted by Ahmad Black. Six interceptions this year for Black. That's number seven. Not since the TCU game, I believe, has Oklahoma faced a secondary that challenges you on every single snap, every single route you run. Black just took it away. Tom, as a receiver, you want to be a hands catcher, but watch the ball come out of the hands of Joaquin Iglesias. He has it in his hands. They separate, ball stays in the air, and Ahmad Black takes it from him for a clean pick. On the field, we had a timeout. During the timeout, we had a review of the previous play. The ruling on the field was confirmed that we had an interception, first down, Florida. No argument from us. Look clean from the beginning. Well, Tim Tebow on first down, beginning to drive at his own 24 yard line. The Sooners need a stop. Tebow runs the option. Little shovel pass to Aaron Hernandez. And he's out to the 37 yard line. That is a first down for Florida. One of their one of their favorite plays and one of their staples because it gives you multiple options. Tebow either can pitch it to Harvin one or shovel it inside to Aaron Hernandez, a play that worked for a touchdown in the SEC championship game against Alabama. Very tough to defend. That's a different version of the triple option. Handed to Demps. And he's tripped up at the line of scrimmage and picks up maybe two. Obviously, Florida looking to possess the ball, looking to go down and score. But at worst, two first downs gives them an opportunity to change field position and assist their defense. They picked up one so far, trying to get that second one and then go from there. Again, Oklahoma trying to creep that eighth man into the box. Nick Harris has been doing that much of the game, number five. Run the option, and they were looking for that shovel pass again. Hernandez was in, Demps was out, Tebow kept it, picks up a yard, third. And we'll call it seven. This is a big play right here for Oklahoma on defense. Right back under the gun is their defense. Brent Venables, their defensive coordinator, trying to dial something up. 
The risk with blitzing is Florida running the option. Hard to be sound versus the option if you blitz. Let's see if they motion anyone into the backfield. Yeah. I think Florida might have jumped a little motion. Ball start, 75. Offense. That's a five-yard penalty. This Phil Troutwine's second one of the game. Really, it was three right here. It's really three. Remember the one that didn't get called because the quarter ran out? It's been a tough night for the offensive linemen for both teams. And I'm talking about the better offensive linemen. Duke Robinson, the All-American, Troutwine, All-SEC. So third and seven becomes a tougher chore at third and 12. I think, I think that here, Oklahoma rushes four and plays a little bit of coverage. They rush three and play some coverage. Tebow looking down the field and throws. It is caught. And that is a first down to his roommate, Riley Cooper, to the 49-yard line. A gain of 16 on third and 12 in the clock. Will start to run once they spot it. Down to seven and a half to go. How many times have you heard someone question the accuracy of the young man playing quarterback for Florida? often correct and how many times have you seen him put it where it needs to be put in a key situation yeah when it needs when to be it needs put to there, be done you got it Harbin lost his footing they have gotten back to the line of scrimmage second down seven minutes to play in Miami the Florida Gators looking for their second national championship under Urban Meyer, their third in school history, trying to deny Bob Stoops his second national championship and what would be an eighth in OU history. Good first down for the Oklahoma defense. They won it second and long now. They have the advantage. They have to press it. Tebow looking down the field and the catch is made first of the night by David Nelson to the 20. This is a big league throw. Fakes the run, steps back, excellent protection, and on a line over the linebacker, Balligan number 10, and in front of the defensive back, the safety Harris, and Nelson using his body to create a wall in front of the DB and haul it in. Tebow hands it to Harvin. And he slips a couple of tackles down to the 15. Bob Stoops urging his team, trying to will his team to, at the minimum, Field goal. Obviously, you, you know, you're thinking field goal. I mean, you very minimum, you force a turnover. Right. But after that, you'd settle for a field goal and give your offense a final shot. Because the field goal right now is almost conceded by where they are in the field, field of play in terms of being in range. You can't let them get in the end zone because you're battling clock now, too, at 530 and counting. Harvin touches it again. And he is short of the first down. They weren't sure how many plays they were going to get out of Harbin tonight. By our mark, he's been in there for 49 plays in the game. I think he's shown a lot of heart. No because doubt. We watched him run around in practice a couple of days ago. We weren't firmly convinced that he would be 100% for this game. He has played awfully well. Third and short. I don't think you get fancy here if you're Florida. You go with what works. That's Tebow. Had a lot going on before the snap of that ball for a third and one. That may have been a little bit of overkill on Florida's part. Cross the snap. Ball start. 75. Up wow. Up. It's a five yard penalty. You're talking about a fifth-year senior there in Troutwine. Would not have expected that out of him in, the, in this game. Well, Jack is back on Sunday, January the 11th, the new season of 24. Finally here, a two-night, four-hour premiere. Begins this Sunday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. 4.30 and counting. 
So a third and one now becomes third and six. Tebow on the option. Inside shovel pass. Hernandez down to the six. First and goal, Gators. And this is what holds a defense at bay. You can't really attack if they have an option attack. And if, and if Florida has an option, they have it two ways. The regular style to the trail back. Also inside shovel to the tight end and another huge first down for the Gators. Bob Stoops showing the frustration and eyeing the clock at four minutes and counting. West shut of downs now for the Gators. First and goal. James in motion. Tebow on the keeper. Is inside the five and down to the four. And he gained additional yardage after initial contact, didn't he? I mean, it just seemed like the play should have been over and the pile kept moving. That big body taking people inside the five yard line. Of course, Oklahoma, only one win in their last five bowl games. They've lost four consecutive BCS games, including two national championship games. 03 Sugar Bowl to LSU, 04 Orange Bowl to SC. Estepinen checks in as an extra blocker, number 93. Lofted to the end zone, touchdown Nelson. Superman strikes again. <laughs> Phillips the point after. This one not over yet. Ten point game, 3.07 to play. And watch it, but what makes this play possible is the running ability all game long of Tim Tebow. But we've seen this jump pass over the years, and it's usually been wide open. In this case, it was defended well, but it was well thrown. And David Nelson, how about this guy jumping up and becoming a player as a junior? Ten catches on the year, a couple of big ones on that drive, including the touchdown catch that puts Florida up by ten. Tim Tebow, a young man unwavering in his faith and how it sustains him. His remarkable achievements off the field define him far more than those on the field. Has traveled to Croatia, Thailand, three times to the Philippines with his family on mission trips. He's fed needy children, lived at an orphanage, as well as a leper colony. He is just an extraordinary Young man. Our all state good hands play of the game. The interception, which got the ball back for the Gators by Ahmad Black. I just don't think you really can talk enough and you and I Charles had a chance to be around this young man having never had the opportunity to meet him you have I have not all the things you hear about him from so many people and none of them do him justice <laughs> until you meet him in person it is incredible isn't it he's an amazing kid 21 years old to think what most of us were doing at 21 the places he's been the things he's done Extraordinary. Joaquin Iglesias. Out across the 30 yard line. So many gorgeous pictures just above the playing field brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Now, Oklahoma has 22 drives, scoring drives this season that have been a minute or less. And another extraordinary young man coming out to lead them. Sam Bradford, the Heisman Trophy winner. Knocked down by Trateau. 
And that's what we just said. Look at that. They can get it done, but right now I think Charlie Strong is going to put it on the defensive front of Florida. Three and four man rush, drop everyone else in the coverage, try and make Oklahoma go the long way and eat up clock. Set up the screen to the tight end Gresham. And he's chopped down to the 35. Clock continues to roll. Down to 245 and a third down of coming for the Sooners. You can't say enough about what this Gator defense has done tonight. Been, been tremendous. The two goal line stands in the first half have positioned Florida to be where they are right now. Incomplete, and there's no debate. Oklahoma has to go for it here. Trailing by 10 with 2.30 left in the game. Yeah, you can't punt the ball away here and expect to get it back and have an opportunity. Now, Charlie Strong has a decision to make. Do you try and get it done right now? Maybe a little extra pressure on Bradford and play man, or you drop back. No in Florida. They're coming <laughs> to get him. Here comes Brandon Spikes on the edge. That's him. challenge Oklahoma's receivers on every play. For a while, Oklahoma's receivers were doing a very nice job. But as the game moved on, the defense tightened and tightened. And there's your end result. Debo will handle the football. And Oklahoma will have to start spending their final two, uh, two timeouts. Coming up on the Southwest Post Game Report, Chris Rose, Jimmy Johnson, Barry Switzer, Eddie George will have post game analysis. And of course, we'll have the BCS National Championship Trophy presentation. Sooners have one timeout remaining. Percy Harvin, such a gutsy, tough effort here tonight. Defense has been the story of this game, though, hasn't it? They came into it with these two galloping offenses, and we wondered if the two defenses could have any effect. But well, both of them have. When you really get down to it, both of them have. Florida obviously with the advantage now, but Oklahoma stayed in it by making some defensive plays. And we're getting ready to unload on Urban Meyer. Two years ago tonight, Urban Meyer, by way of the University of Cincinnati, Ohio State, as an assistant before getting his first head coaching job at Bowling Green, two years at Utah where he crashed the BCS party from a non-BCS school, won a national championship with Tim Tebow playing in a backup role to Chris Lee. And now two years to the day, Urban Meyer. It appears will celebrate a second national title. Penalty flag came in late after some jawing there between Tim Tebow and Nick Harris. They called on sportsmen like on Tebow. And so they'll back him up. That might be the first thing he's ever done wrong in his <laughs> life. 
Well, it, right now, would you say that he's had an answer for Dominique Franks, who said he's the fourth best quarterback? He would be the fourth best quarterback in the Big 12. Which might be the single most ridiculous statement that anybody's ever uttered. But you know, you know, looked like Tim Tebow was getting after it with Nick Harris, and that's what the flag was about. But I'm sure it went on both sides. But sometimes the second guy is the guy who gets caught. That'll go into his file, go into his permanent record. <laughs> A little letter of reprimand <laughs> for Tim Tebow. We talked to Tim's father the other day in practice. Yep. Of course, Tebow, the youngest of five children, to Bob and Pam Tebow. Tim was homeschooled but able to play football at a public high school because of a Florida state law. His family sold everything they had to start mission work in the Philippines. In fact, that's where Tim Tebow was born. And where a number of kids are named after him. Yep. Remember, he has not turned the ball over by fumble. And what, 300 plus touches now <laughs> since Ole Miss, I believe it was. Who do you think they want to carry the football and hold on to it down the stretch? Final timeout spent by Oklahoma. So what did he do? Let's take a look. Hey, hey. There you go. Yep, and then that would call him. That would fall under the taunting rule. That's why. That's why they had to drop the flag. He was backing away, which was good, but it was right call by the officials. You can't do something like that in front of the other team. And of course, right before the game, I mean, moments before the kickoff, Harris and Tebow had a few words as Tebow was throwing passes to receivers down in the end zone. Look at those numbers for Tebow. Granted, the two interceptions we yes. mentioned he'd only thrown two all year long. He threw two for the season, two tonight. But the way that he bounced back, you know, it's just the way he bounced back. And, and the comment by Dominique Franks, obviously, one, the, the coaches from Oklahoma wishes that he did not say. But I don't believe for a second it wasn't something he heard within the confines of his own locker room. Out of the 30 yard line. I think now they don't have to run another play other than kneeling. You know, they can take the ball, snap it, kneel, and call it square. I don't think you have to run anyone anymore. You definitely don't want to run Tim Tebow anymore. Because right now, all the Florida fans are saying, one more year, Tim. One more year. And does that give him 100 yards rushing on the night? Sure does. 100 on the nose. Steve Spurrier. Won a national championship with Bob Stoops as his defensive coordinator with the Florida Gators in 1996. And then 10 years later under Urban Meyer, the Gators won their second national championship. And tonight, <laughs> Urban Meyer will celebrate the third national championship for the University of Florida. You know, and you look at Bob Stoops' team, as you see Urban Meyer now getting ready to get the celebrate. He knows it's coming. Oh, no. What are you guys doing to him? <laughs> but it never felt so good. But all these people now talking about Bob Stoops, remember this. He's had Oklahoma now play for a national championship in four of nine seasons. Four of nine seasons. That's pretty darn good. Yep. Back to the NFL this weekend. Arizona and Carolina Saturday. Sunday, the Eagles and the Giants. Saturday, America's number one pregame show starts at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Sunday, it'll start at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, in high definition only on Fox. Tell you what, Bob Stoops had his team ready to play here tonight. There's no debate about that. You know, we live in a society, Charles, that uh, you may believe rightly, I believe wrongly. You define so many people by what happens on one given night. I mean, like you said, 
I'm not sure there's a program in the country where if you guaranteed them they play in four <laughs> national title games in nine years they wouldn't say I'll take it all day every day but he will have his detractors come tomorrow morning. Now they can detract all they want. Does anyone understand how difficult it is to year in and year out be in this position. People just don't get it. Tebow takes a knee and that is that. Congratulations to the University of Florida Gators who have won the school's third national football championship. Charles you begin the conversation now when you talk about greatest players in the history of college football Tim Tebow a pair of national championships a Heisman Trophy Award in three years you know, I just he is unquestionably in that top ten perhaps now in the top five and I believe he'll be back next year to burnish his legend. The two best teams of the country put on a great show of the FedEx BCS National Championship game and your Florida Gators are the number one team of the country and the BCS National Champions. Gator Nation celebrates Fox FedEx of the BCS proud to present the trophy to the champion representing John Swafford the commissioner Tom Hansen from the Pac-10 will present the official championship coaches trophy to Urban Meyer you want to hang on to that or are you going to hold it all right you got that coach first on behalf of the BCS conferences and institutions I'd like to congratulate both Oklahoma and Florida for their outstanding seasons and exciting game this evening and now on behalf of the American Football Coaches Association, it is my privilege to present the National Championship Coaches Trophy to Urban Meyer and the Florida Gators. Well, lift it up. You, it. Uh, you can lift that. Go ahead, Urban. It'll come out of there. All right, there you go. That's Coach, uh, congratulations. Uh, let's talk about, about this game. Excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> There'll be plenty of time to celebrate. Uh, how tough was this one? Well, this is a great, we played a great team in Oklahoma. I want to thank Danny Potts and Eric Palms for a great uh, week here in Miami. And most of all, I want to thank our players. This is one of the best teams in college football history. I love these guys. They overcome a lot of injuries, and I love these guys. Uh, how does this compare to the first championship when you had the underdog role? Here you were kind of the favorite, I guess, going in. Oh, it's, uh, it, it never gets old, I promise you that. At Florida, a great institution like Florida, you should be able to compete for championships. But these guys overcame a lot, and I'm awful proud of them. You talked about special teams being important, how uh, playing a physical game. That's one of the best offenses in the history of the game, and you had a four, you had a great defensive stand right before the half. Obviously, the fourth down, the interception, kept them out of the end zone when you needed to. Yeah, I think the turnovers were the difference. We had turnovers down deep in our own territory, and in the third quarter when they were starting to drive, Ahmad Black made a great play. Oklahoma's a great team. And uh, so are the Gators. And I know you said we, you think we'll see a playoff at some point in college football. Does anybody have an argument about, hey, we should be up there with Florida for number one? I'll tell you, we're going to enjoy a big win. We're going to enjoy being the national championship. Let someone else worry about that. Gators are number one. Right. Congratulations, Coach. Thank, and, Coach, if you can hang around for a moment because I want to present the, and this you'll be proud of, the defensive player. We're going to go defensive first. The defensive player of the award. To Carlos uh, Dun, where is Carlos? Is he here? Carlos Dunlap. Carlos, Carlos Dunlap. You're the defensive player of the game. Congratulations. We'll hold that up. And you just heard Urban Meyer talk about the terrific defensive effort. But I'll just ask you to comment about uh, about this offense. And certain words were said beforehand, but when it came time to show it on the field, you did that. How was this e defense able to do it? I mean, we had a whole month of preparation, so we knew everything that was going to run. They gave us a good run, but we set together as a defense when times got hard. And all I got to say is Gator Nation. All right, congratulations. And now the, the offensive player of the game and the, the heart and soul of Gator Nation, Tim Tebow. <laughs> Tim, congratulations. Thank you so much. This is an unbelievable night. I just want to thank the fans. 
They were so unbelievable. They came out and supported us all year. And uh, I just love being a Gator and thank all of you. All right, the, the range of emotion in this game, was it a more difficult game than you expected? And how were you able to kind of hang in there? Well, Oklahoma's a great team, and they came out here and they fought hard. And I'm just so proud of my teammates because they kept fighting for four quarters, and that's how we were able to pull it out. Hey, Tim, I know the country remembered the, the apology from you after the one loss, the one stumble to Ole Miss. And uh, after that, you, you were right on. How much did that fuel you and this team? Well, I think we were motivated from that. I think we learned that we have to come out every week and play with passion and enthusiasm and, uh, and play for each other. And I think that's what we did. I respect. I respectfully ask. I, I know you're going to enjoy this, but the country wants to know: Are you going to come back to Florida next season? You know what? I don't know. I'm going to sit down and look at it. But I know one thing: I, I love Gator Nation, and uh, I just want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and thank all of y'all. Y'all are unbelievable. All right. Well, congratulations on a great year. Oh, here's your trophy too. All right, Tim. You believe it? Thank you very much, Tom. Let's go back upstairs to you. We thank Urban Meyer, Carlos Dunlap, Tim Tebow. Both SIDs, both universities for all of their help and preparation for this championship game. The guys are standing by in the studio right after this timeout. Florida wins a FedEx BCS National Championship.